For me, VR began in the 90s. Uh, I was in college for computer science. Uh, the draw for VR for me was really the idea that we could step into the world and, and be part of it and interact with it and it like transcend from what we're limited or what we can't do in the real world to be able to do in something that is virtually real. People's expectations for it were way higher than what could have been delivered back then. Fast forward about 20 years now and it's really encouraging the hardware that we have now really allows us to take that first step of creating a sense of presence and convincing people that their minds that they are actually stepping into this alternate reality. Developing in a VR environment has presented a huge number of challenges, some of which we anticipated, a lot of which we didn't. The toughest challenges of all, though, were things about having to reinvent how you interact with the games. We have to be able to do meaningful things in these virtual worlds in order to feel like we want to come back and experience them over and over again. We wanted to figure out what kind of games we could build around this experience of being in a virtual world with other people. And one of the very first ideas that, that rose to the top, one of the things, the worlds that we wanted to inhabit with other people, well, Star Trek. We wanted to get on the bridge of a, of a starship and fly it with other people. Star Trek Bridge Crew began with some prototyping we were doing with uh, social experiences in video games and, and virtual reality, where we had a prototype where you could, you could literally just sit across the table from another person in VR and talk with them. So you're the captain and using a menu system, you can give orders to the NPC crew. And that's very cool in a different way. You're still living that Star Trek fantasy, but you know, VR is about being as real, as virtually real as possible. So that menu system was just kind of like our, you know, lowest common denominator way of approaching the problem. And we started talking to IBM about Watson and, and we're contacted like, hey, Watson does great uh, speech recognition and voice recognition. Uh, and it seems like a natural fit for the game. What do you think? And I was like, well, yeah, that would be awesome because it just complements VR so perfectly to be able to interact with NPCs in a real, natural way. We both were interested in seeing where this could go. He and I kept in contact uh, and we were in good faith prototyping and working on um, uh, different ways in which we could implement this uh, Watson for, uh, for this game, which is really kind of a first for Watson also. We built the game in Unity and Watson supplied a Unity SDK or API for us to use. Uh, so really, it was very fast to hook it up. You know, within a matter of days, probably, we had test commands up and running already. It wasn't until we started working with Watson that it clicked, that we finally had a technology robust enough that players could use their voice. The captain could just speak to a human player or to an AI and get the expected result. Fire on my target. Helm, full speed ahead. One up destroyed. All right, did we get them? Engineering, transport survivors. So this feature is built using uh, two Watson services, Watson Conversation, which is our chatbot training graphical user interface, and then of course speech to text to transcribe what a person says into a text transcription, which is then passed to the Watson Conversation for parsing of, of meaning. Approach my target, full speed ahead. Say, raise shields, full speed ahead, full power to engines, red alert, whatever you want. People are loving this experience and we're getting a flood of great ideas from fans of things we can do to expand on this experience. But the most important thing that, that we're learning uh, from players is that the core concept of the game, be in a virtual world together with other people and, and overcome challenges together, it, it works. People love it. So we have the foundation of something big that we can build on here. We plan to do a lot more of these use case-based solutions for VR and AR developers. Um, and really, we want to hear from the community. What do developers want? What's a problem that needs to be solved? What can we offer in addition to interactive speech? And of course, we're going to keep working on that and improve the solution over time to sort of be thought leaders in the early VR and AR space and really serve these developers first, early and often. As time goes by and, and as we start using machines and, and computers and algorithms like Watson, 
Um, the potential for sort of a more conversation-based engine uh, is really interesting for games and I think for VR as well. It's really exciting to, to see this kind of influence coming into virtual reality, to see new technology and new players and new experiences all coming together.